What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. We back at it again, man, with another installment of the Hall of Game podcast. And you guys know that I, I do this. I try to do it daily if I can get, if I can get into it. Um, this show is dedicated to African-American men who are, you know, looking to basically go up into corporate corporate America. You're looking to change careers. Um, are you just looking for some tips uh, that we may have? We have our brother Rich Turner joining us. And uh, we have brothers from all facts of uh, walks of life, like my brother Mediocre. He's a you know NBA graduate, uh, top 50 program. We have guys that come on that are medical doctors. We have guys that come on that uh, are engineers. We have guys that come on that are, um, you know, manufacturers like Rich Turner, guys who have just own personal businesses like uh, Ramil and Mike, Chet Global. Uh, so we have a lot of different talented brothers that do a whole different slew of things. Uh, brother Beat Allergy is supposed to be joining us. He's also a person that does hand-to-hand sales as a vendor. So today we want to talk about sales versus the service industry. What is the best choice for African American men? So, what I'm gonna do is there's so many talented brothers on the podcast. I'm gonna let we'll start off with mediocre tutorials, uh, and uh, and and basically let him introduce himself. Go ahead, brother. Sure, sure. Uh, oh, shit, you know, I already know I'm happy to be down back in here for one more game, one more haul of game. You understand what I'm saying? And shout out to everybody that's joining the panel. Okay, we're gonna have a good discussion. Happy for it. Uh, for folks that don't know me, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, got my own YouTube channel. Um, I come at it from a, a corporate lens, you know, throughout my entirety of my career. Um, and I've been doing YouTube for like a year. It's been about three or so years, but like a year since like uh, my channel has started to amass like subscribers. But um, all of my career in corporate America, uh, I went back, I want to say like six or seven years ago, graduated with my uh, MBA. Uh, and been working in corporate America. I've been at, you know, Fortune 100, Fortune 50 companies throughout my career. Um, so I can come at sales and service from a corporate perspective. But then, you know, also for the past year and change, I've been working on a YouTube channel. So, you know, I can talk about it from more of an entrepreneurial perspective as well. Um, I think sales, both sales and services, you both need those in business, no matter what you're doing. Uh, people sales to selling products, to selling services, you have to be uh, uniquely aware of the positives and the negatives of both when you're considering those for careers. And I can get into that uh, as well. So glad to be here. Glad to be on the panel. <laughs> let's get, let's go in today. All right. All right. All right. And uh, go ahead, Brother Ramil. Oh, actually, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Mike Check Global. Let's go ahead. Go, Mike. I'm sorry. I missed him. Go ahead, Brother Mike Check uh, Global. Yes, sir. I appreciate uh, O'Shea for being on the uh, live today. Uh, my experience, um, I came from uh, doing uh, two years of college at Berkeley College of Music and Music Production. Uh, I was there and I amassed about $100,000 worth of college loan debt and things of that nature. And um, my journey was basically, hey, you know, you got to make some money. You got to make this thing happen. So I went right into uh, being an entrepreneur um, at the age of uh, 21. And um, pretty much what I learned was that, hey, you know, being a musician, you have to learn marketing, you know. So I got into marketing, uh, started my business, Mike Check Global, um, and pretty much we help artists uh, go viral. We help businesses uh, grow their business through uh, viral advertising and things of that nature. So I have a lot of experience in uh, the services side, you know, providing a service that people want and also the sales side, you know, because, um, for, for my people out there who may be getting into sales, there's two things that you might want to think about, you know, and I don't want to go into it all the way, but when you look at YouTube videos and you see the other races talking about sales, some of their techniques and their talking points and things that they say doesn't really work for our people when it comes to black on black business, you know, using certain technical words, you know, dealing with certain people might be a turnoff. So, Today, I want to talk about different strategies um, and how you communicate in sales. And, you know, I'm just appreciate being on here, man. All right, brother. I really, really appreciate you uh, you coming on. Uh, let's go to, I think that's brother, uh, brother Ramil, and then we go to Rince Turner. 
Yeah, what's going on? Thanks for having me. It's Ramil Amir. Uh, my channel is basically about uh, black male empowerment through logical thinking and not emotional thinking. So make sure you check out my channel. Uh, I am involved in wholesale real estate, uh, linking uh, motivated sellers with cash buyers for a fee. Uh, also, uh, my check stays in the music. I also uh, sell instrumentals online. I uh, I sell buy and sell cars. I do anything that, you know, can keep the cash flow coming that's what i'm about and i spread that knowledge on my channel as well but basically about empowerment and uh you know thanks for having me o'shea and uh, we can get to it all right all right all right thank you so much and let's go to uh last but definitely not least brother rich turner all right what's going on brother how y'all doing um name is rich turner i am a uh, manufacturing slash production manager for a pretty big brand in this company, uh, I'm sorry, in this country, uh, specializing in process improvement and Lean Six Sigma, uh, and also people growth. Um, always an honor to be here. And most of the time, I always try to take the angle of, uh, for any other brothers who are listening, I always try to take a perspective that I wish, uh, I try to give information that I wish somebody had given me or I wish I could have heard, um, rather than doing all of the work on the ground. So. The sales versus service, I've had the opportunity um, being in six positions in seven years to uh, work in both. And now I kind of bridge the gap between the two. So glad to be here, brothers. And uh, uh, any way I can contribute uh, is an honor. And I will. All right. All right. So, guys, um, let me kind of uh, talk about service industry. Right. And then we talk about the service sector. And it's, so the definition of that is a business that does work for a customer and occasionally provides good, but is not involved uh, in manufacturing. So uh, service jobs or examples, uh, housekeeping tours, nursing, teaching. Um, whereas people that are in like the manufacturing sectors, they're like uh, tangible goods, you know, cars, you know, clothes, equipment, stuff like that. Right. Um, now. Uh, a lot of brothers work in um i would say if anything right probably more so the service industry but let me kind of you know you, maybe you can be defined a little bit better than that uh, mediocre tutorials what is uh sales jobs you know what's the objective and then what's the objective of, of a brother that works in the service industry yeah um so uh from a sales perspective um i think about um you know you work for a organization or you work for yourself and you touch the customer okay um, you're trying to attain people into a business. Um, service to me is retain people into a business, right? So from like a YouTube channel perspective, um, every YouTube video that I do is a sale, right? And that sale is to click the subscribe button. And if I did a really good sale, they're going to click the subscribe and, and the alert button. Okay. Uh, for the organization that I currently work in my nine to five. Okay. We're trying to sell you a product and we're trying to sell you a good experience. Now, when you talk about uh, sustaining or the retention rate of that customer, right? On a YouTube channel, uh, it, it's how long are they gonna stay subscribed? How many how many times are they, uh, how long are they gonna watch a video? How many times are they gonna come back into a video? And what am I doing to sustain that service that they saw in that first video? Okay, from like a corporate perspective, it's what are we doing to maintain your business for the corporation that you work for? Uh, also, too, um, uh, and this is I'm going to stretch your definition a, a little bit uh, as well, O'Shea. Um, so one of my first jobs and coming out of undergrad, I worked in um, I, I was working in a big bank and I worked for an organization called Marketing Services. OK, uh, within this organization, we were essentially serving the marketing department. So I say that to say you can be in a service oriented uh, position, but you can serve another organization uh, as well. Uh, and we can, I don't want to uh, bore you guys to death on kind of what I did, but essentially I worked for a credit card company and I was uh, a business analyst and I was like translating information from the marketing department because they would speak marketing and then I would translate that information and in specification documents for IT. Uh, and then I'd kind of manage the relationship because IT technology doesn't speak marketing. So I'd be the liaison between between that, that analyst role. But I worked in a service capacity, but internal to a large organization. So just a slight stretch on that initial uh, definition. 
Okay, okay. Now, what what about a brother who does sales, like you know, strictly like uh, sales jobs and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. What so, would you say you know, about about that? Yeah. So, uh, from a sales perspective, um, well, here's the thing. I mean, we can start getting into some of the pros and the cons about it. You know, uh, and, and I considered sales for a long time, and I'll be honest, like. The number one reason why I consider sales uh, is income. It's, it's income. Uh, salespeople right. at like a lot of organizations, a lot of like even Fortune 500 type companies, there are people that are front lines and then sales making just as much as some of the top executives in that company, right? Okay. Make, making just as yeah, much, true. if not more, if, if not making more than the CEO, but you got to be a really, really good salesperson. Now, mm -hmm. um, now, what you do from a sales perspective now, no matter if it's you have a YouTube channel and you're trying to get people to come into your organization or mm -hmm. excuse me, your channel or a fortune, whatever. And you're trying to get people to come into your organization. Right. Um, it, it is it's it's very keen uh, on certain skills that you have to be really good at and um, what that is. I mean, you can even think about it. Um, I said earlier, like people sales, like. You know, if I walk in and I'm trying to get a job somewhere, I am selling myself, right? Like I'm, right. I'm, I'm selling my talents. I am selling, right? So like the key fundamental fa factors, like outside of um, any like specific niche knowledge, right? Like, so if like, if you want to sell some forms of insurance, you might need like a series license, uh, for example, right? If you want to, you want to sell uh, investment, um, investments, stocks, options, you might need a, uh, a FINRA license, so to speak. Uh, but then also you have to think about sales uh, within yourself. Like, what are you doing to sell yourself to get like hired? Now? So it's like we use the word sales, but it can mean a lot of a lot of different things. And I think like one of the things that that holds up like folks in our community is uh, is brothers that look like you and me that don't know how to sell themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know uh, what skills am I gaining? How can I take those skills and then uh, uh, show the how I can transfer those skills into something that a business or an organization or a problem that I'm trying to that I'm trying to solve for someone else in the creation of, of, of income? All right. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, and uh, shout out to the brothers out here. Super chatting. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, we have the brother Spidey Web Productions. Shout out to O'Shea and MTR. Glad to see you brothers working together from a surge, brother. Thank you so much. Sister Melody, thank you for the follow super chat. All right. And uh, thank you, brother um, uh, Mediocre. Let, let's talk about the Mike Check Global and what you do. Yeah. Um, some brothers say, you know, a lot of brothers are in the mixture of both, right? Yeah. Um, let's talk about your, 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 your experience with sales and service industries and how it works. Yeah. So um, I have a marketing company, which is a service and I have to sell that. So I would say if um, if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have to use both unless you okay. have started your, career, your your company with uh, and you're fortunate enough to have somebody to be the spokesperson or the salesman for you. A lot of times okay. you're going to have to be both. So when you say what's what you know, what is better for black men? Um, it would have to be the decision that they, what lane they're in, you know? So okay. if they are, you know, give me an example, Steve jobs would be an entrepreneur and he was also a salesman and he also had a, you know, a service or a product as well. So is it basically, it's almost like, is it better for black men to be entrepreneurs or to work with entrepreneurs as being an entrepreneur? Now I'll give you an example. I had a young man that I was mentoring from uh, 19 to about, I think he 19 to 23. Uh, recently, we aren't working together anymore. Um, but the what I was trying to teach him was like, hey, you know, you don't necessarily have to start a business because he got him a marketing degree. I was like, I got a marketing company. You know, you can cl work close with me. You know, you'll make way more than working, you know, a job and things like that. But you'll be a salesman. And what I was trying to teach him was, you know, you know, all you got to do is focus on sales. I'll, you know, do the rest. You know what I'm saying? But I would do sales as well, too. So it's almost like black men can work with another company and be a salesman in, in that company or they can develop a service and then sell that service that they that they have. 
So it, it's really, to me, they would have to, a black man would have to figure out what lane they want to be in, you know, because mm -hmm. the I see somebody was talking about the commissions. The commission is, you know, relative to the size of the product, the, 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 the right. how much, you know, the product is. And you can, you know, uh, tailor that to, uh, you know, pitch that to different salesmen and, you know, based on what they want to do. So which one is better? It really depends if black black men want to work with an entrepreneur that already got something going, that already has a service that needs more uh, uh, sales force, basically. Right. Or does he want to develop uh, a service and then, you know, have to do both? So it's, up, it's really up to the black man that what's he want, what he wants to do. All right. All right. Thank you, Brother Cello. Thank you, Brother Rob Pittman. And commissions is basically just getting a, you know, a payout, a percentage of a sale. It could go up after you hit a certain amount of sale. It could double. Commissions are very, you know, basically it's your percentage of the sale that you are making to basically incentivize you to sell a product. Uh, brother, Brother Ramil, um, what, what is your experience with the with sales in our service industry? Uh, like Mike Global, Mike Check Global just said, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur, an independent one at that, you're gonna have to learn both. Uh, and mm -hmm. you got to learn both of them very well. But um, if if you had to choose between one or the other, and you are at a pitchfork in your life, uh, sales is there's no question. And that, the reason why I tell you, the reason why I say sales is better and, and actually more valuable is because when you learn a service, you're usually learning how to do that one task or whatever else is comes under the umbrella of that of that service whatever the industry but when you learn how to sell you can literally go into any industry because everybody needs salesmen and you can and you can literally perform in any industry because sales is universal and uh even even though mike check was right he said sometimes these traditional selling techniques don't work for black people but even then like if you learn the skill of selling you can tailor it towards black people but the skill of selling is is valuable in any industry any service or product that's being sold you ha it has to get sold if you stay in the service area you better have a career that's strictly focused on becoming as good best as you can in that service industry bill in sales the money is literally no cap on your earnings if you're good uh like mm -hmm. uh Me mediocre just said uh commission based mm -hmm. And you can take it into various industries. You can take that sales skills and go into various industries. And mm -hmm. that's why if you had to choose between one or two, I would just say skills, uh, sales. Sales, right, right. Okay. And thank you, brothers, for being here. Make sure you like the video. Go ahead, Brother Turner. Yes, sir. So I would uh, I would come from a different angle on it. I would say uh, I would pick service over sales, and I'll tell you why. Why? Everyone is not a salesman. If you're somebody like me, I hate salesmen, right? Everything that I, and, and not, not you brothers, but just saying in general, if, mm -hmm. if I, I hate trying to be sold something, right? Everything that I want, I go and buy. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just as early as last week, a guy knocked on the door under the premise that uh, they're opening up a new store in the neighborhood. He was a brother, stepped out on the porch and talked to him and lo and behold, he's trying to sell a vacuum cleaner, right? Um, <laughs> so, you know, so it's the, it's, 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 it's you know, it's the piss on my leg and tell me it's rain and peace that comes with some sales. Um, right. It's the, but you know, the guys that are good at it, the brothers are hundred percent right. The guys that are good at it, man, you can earn a really good living. And some of the, you know, I think most of the, if I'm not mistaken, most of the millionaires or billionaires or something like that, they all have something to do with sales. Highest um, paying right. job are sales. Highest paying job, my bad. Yeah. Abso yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they're hundred percent correct, but you have to be, you literally have to have a few tools and you have to have a personality uh, for sales. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I want to get straight to it. If I want it, I'm going to buy it. It's, just, it's you know, it's no different than, um, you know, be, me buying all these cars that I have. Right. Um, if I see it and it's and it's I'm, I'm really not going to haggle too much. I'm going to go in. I may count off for once um, and then I'll buy it and I want to get I want to get going to, to the business. So but what I do, we have what's called a VOC, a voice of the customer. Um, the voice of the customer is as it relates to what I do. And it also falls into sales, right? Cause you are selling to a customer and then you're getting a commission off of that. Um, in my case, the customer may be the end user um, at the end of uh, my process, meaning um, I produce, or I play a certain part in a bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll say bottling industry. That's what I mean. We'll say the bottling industry. Mm -hmm. My job is to 
fill the bottles, make sure the torque specs are on the on the bottles are correct. Um, package them, um, you know, put them in, uh, package them, palletize them. And my end customer may be um, the guy in the warehouse who's loading them on the truck. Right. So I have to do my job um, in my small part of this overall picture to have a satisfied customer. And when he when he goes to grab the pallets, the, the cases aren't busting open. Or when he goes to grab the pallet, the shrink is not too loose and the pallet is toppling over, right? Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's one aspect of a customer. At, when you talk about a customer that you are making sales to, you have a couple of different angles to look at it too. You can use VOC then. Voice of the customer or what we call GPCA, that's gathering, prioritizing, classifying, and assessing the voice of the customer. So you're getting the data to see what that customer cares about so that you can custom tailor your sales points to make those sales, right? Um, and like I said, that's done by data, you know, so you may look at, um, I'll give you an example. When you go to the store and ask you, do you want a receipt? They may take those numbers and say, well, most people are saying they don't want a receipt. So um, we can we can slash our um, receipt roll budget by X amount and save money um, as a company. So they're using the voice of the customer, us telling them, no, I don't want a receipt to cut back on spending money on rolls of receipt, right? And that, you know, when you look at it over the course of a fiscal year, they'll say, okay, this is how much money we've saved. Um, and then you also have kind of going back to what I first started at, you have what's called a side pack. A side pack, a side pack is supply input, process output, and then your customer. So what's going into my process and then what's coming out on the back end that's going to my customer. I want to make sure that I am giving that customer exactly what they paid for. I don't want any defects. And the way you measure your defects, it, it may be complaints per million. How many complaints per million units that you've produced? Um, how many complaints have you got? Um, and if you're doing it good, you know, your complaints per million should be below, uh, I would say, you know, 1%. If, if, you, if you are, if you're handling business like you should, and if you're really handling business, it should be, you know, no higher than 0 0.6, 0 0.5. And that's, that's per million units that you produce. So, for brothers, and, and just to kind of bring this all the way back, for brothers, um, if you have the personality to be in sales, um, you know, if you're good with women, if you're good, uh, you know, talking your way out of, out, of, out, of, out of speeding tickets, then, hey, brother, you might, you know, you may tailor it a little bit and you may be awesome at sales. Um, if you are somebody who's really not um, into spending a lot of time having a lot of conversation, you may want to get in on the service side. But as you are in on the service side, you will have to understand the bigger picture. Uh, which is the end consumer. Um, and that'll also help you be a better um, a better source of information for the salesman. We have salesmen come into our building all the time and they want to see the overall process so that they can talk to a customer and say, hey, this is how this is made. Uh, this is what the guys do inside of the plant um, that ultimately ends up with you having a nice cold drink in your fridge um, or at the lake that you're enjoying with your family. So I say I say all of that to say that there's a in manufacturing in my specific industry, um, we have several customers that we um, that we have to service. Uh, you do learn how to work um, cross functionally with other departments. So that's a huge plus I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. What, what would you define the service industry so I can kind of get a better understanding? So for me, when, when, when I think about service industry. I think about um, you are provi either providing a service in the sense of um, you are on the back end or you are the machine that provides the actual product that's being sold. Um, so you are providing a service to the business that the salesman may actually physically be selling or the idea that the, the idea that the sale that the salesman is actually selling you on the back end. So you're providing a service, of course, to the end customer, but you're also providing a service to the salesman. Would that be considered you're in operations? Of course, of course. Okay, all right. Of course, I understand of course. what you're saying. Though. I get it. So yes, what sir, are we yes. trying to figure out? So today we're trying to figure out what is better for black men is being basically in operations for a business or mm -hmm. the sales part of a business. I get it now. I'm just trying to make sure where we, where we at with it. I got yeah, it. so Absolutely. Mike, I think that was actually a really good distinction. I was trying to bring that up in, in the beginning. Like when you say the word sales, it's really specific to the industry or the business that you're talking about. As a, And same thing with service. Um, and shout out to, to, to Wrench Turner. I felt like I was getting my, my green belt again. Yes, sir. <laughs> I heard Cypoc. I heard 
Uh, VOC, I appreciate yes, you, sir. brother. You, you reigniting my, my my service mindset. You understand what I'm saying? Oh but, yeah. Uh, but but I think that it's it's really specific. So it, it you, you get you can hear the way that wrench talks. You know that he's in operations. But there's a lot of people when they say the word service, they think of like a, a waiter at a at a restaurant, right? right. But 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 there's there's uh, but it's all service, right? But I think um, actually Ramil brought up a fantastic point in it as well as to say, um, and I'm, I'm a paraphrase for you, brother, um, right? Like if you want to go, like everybody does sales to a degree, right? Yeah. Whether it's selling your who you are as a person to, you know, to the employer, to who you're dating. Um, but everyone does a degree of sales to Wrench's point. Not everyone does it well. Uh, but to Ramil's point, um, it, you get in order to be really good at service, you have to have a deep technical or like a deep expertise like if you go back to the to the to the waiter a good waiter is going to know everything on the menu they're going to know how long it's going to take to make something if they get the order wrong let's say then they have already kind of what what's going to happen right they're going to give a refund they're going to do this or that even down to an organization like if you ask anything technically specific to wrench he's going to get super specific he's going to pull out some flow charts and diagrams. He's going to take you to the process. He's going to go down to tactically, but he has Indeed. a uh, subject matter level expertise in servicing. But here's the thing is that, again, you could take this idea of sales and bring it to any type of company. Servicing is usually like a, a, a waiter that's really good at being a, a, a waiter at such and such restaurant has a huge learning curve at another restaurant because they had a deep technical expertise at one restaurant as opposed to if they go to another it might completely be shifted meanwhile the sale the skill of sales outside of like the niche kind of you have to either take a certification to sell this product right or just know like you know high level stuff that a, a consumer should know about a product um, but as long as you're like charismatic right you can hold a conversation right you're not selfish with uh, your time speaking to somebody because a lot about sales too is that active listening, right? Being able to, to sit, pause, understand who the person is, uh, mm -hmm. understand what they're coming from, really truly, and understand the problems that they're having, and to mm -hmm. form fit a solution that you have in the back of well, your mind on yeah. how you can, you know, fit fill that gap or fill that need. You understand what I'm right. saying? So right. one requires deep technical expertise, and the other one. Um, not so much, but you can take that across industries, across businesses. Right. Let me let me just read this. Um, uh, Douglas Jones, the Hall of Game uh, show is so our propus. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm never even. Is that what is this? A propus? Great wisdom and uh, the appropriate right and insight on display as always. Loot panel. I propose. Oh, okay. I propose. Oh. That's the first time I ever heard that word before. Salute yeah. panel, salute ODJ. By the way, who won the? I haven't decided yet. But let me just kind of uh, thank you, again, Brother Douglas. Let me just kind of go back to your initial point, to your actually your your end point. I think a lot of sales guys get a bad rap. And uh, when I was ever in sales, um, whether it was call center base or, um, you're basically number one. Um, most con companies that have services that somebody is selling there's several different variations that one will need for any customer you know now you do have the guy if you go to a car lot right and um you know you're going there looking for a ford escort and he's trying to sell you the ford viper i mean the ford you know mustang the shelby that's seventy thousand dollars you know those guys who are a pushy salesman but then you sell based off of like i said the, the best ones you sell based off of a need, right? This is what you need. You know, I'm listening to what you want and I'm customizing a personal solution to you, right? And those tend to be the sales uh, people um, that people tend to like a lot more that people, you know, recommend because, uh, you know, this person's trustworthy and so on and so forth. But let me kind of go to the service industry because even, even though we're YouTubers, um, and my industry is I'm dealing with the underserved market, which is African-American men, whether that be entertainment, whether it be business content and stuff like that. So my, uh, you know, my niche, even on my own personal YouTube channel, outside of being employed by an employer, I'm trying to provide this particular service that I know is necessary. 
you know, and and I think it goes back to people who are in the service industry. What is necessary uh, for, for you to be in? I think, you know, obviously the service industry, you can talk about healthcare, care, uh, people who do professional services. Then you have guys who sell financial services or investments. Those guys tend to do very, very well. Uh, you know, stockbrokers, guys who sell annuities, insurance, all those things are, you know, in the service industry. Um, and then also the guys who are doing securities, tech, you know, guys who are doing coding. Those things are in the service industry. Now, you can still make a lot of money in that. Now, manufacturing is a altogether a different industry, you know, as a on a, on, a, on a scale. Right. But I think, you know, it, it, it depends on the person's personality because you don't have to be um, a pushy person or a person with a super charismatic personality to sell anything. Um, a lot of sales agents are people who can really sell. Uh, I mean, you know, people you can be you know, pretty nice and listen well. So selling is something that everybody can do. You know, it's, it's just an innate thing. But the the service industry, and a lot of us are here on t- talking about it as an entrepreneur. Let me kind of go back to, you know, as an employee. If you're a person, you're looking to go into a service industry and you want to, um, you know, do well, then the, is the service that you're in, is it is it needed, right? Because I think a lot of people that are in the service industry right now found out because COVID nineteen said, "All right, bye bye hotel management, um, you know, bye bye this business, bye bye that." So a lot of guys that were in certain types of customer service, and even if you're a person that was in, um, you know, you were a salesperson at JC Penney's. I'm just you know give an example. Then I mean now you. It's no need for those guys now. Like even guys who sell phones in stores, Sprint, Verizon Wireless. Hey, that used to be a big thing back in the day, right? Those guys used to make a lot of money in, in the kiosk. Those days are gone now. Um, so the the situation is if you're in service or in sales, are you selling or serving in the industry that you can do in? For example, um, one of my boys, he um bought a he has a he sells shoe cleaner now right and, I, and it sounds so ridiculous but the shoe cleaner is eight dollars a shoe cleaner but he set up a shop right outside of champ sports and this guy can sell anything he sold for tesla he sold for every verizon everything at&t the guy doesn't can sell anything he be slapping niggas for like sixty dollars for shoe cleaner like right after they get their jordans boom like they come out and he pitching them and the dude is living there sometimes $1,500 a day. Well, see, the thing about it is the shoe sneaker industry is a is an industry, and that shoe cleaner services the people who like sneakers. A lot of cats like sneakers, right? And every day, you know, outside of, you know, um, Corona being there, but he, he has a market that if you're buying shoes and you walk by him, he going to get you. He got to get you because you just spent $300 on a pair of Jordans. You better want to spend $50 to give you clean. And then I'll, and when he gets you over to his booth, now it's like, oh, your girl got shoes too? Oh, your kids got shoes too? Whoop, 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 for $200 order, right? He's slapping them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think that in whatever one that you that you go in, whether you want to sell or service, and even if you're a YouTube channel, a lot of guys – go to niches that are, you know, like really, really out there. I picked the black male niche in because it's a niche I can grow in and it's an underserved market. So I'll always be able to serve this industry because people don't want to do it. So that's, I'm always going to be okay. So I would just say, whatever you want to do, if you're a salesperson or you're a service person, you know, like a lot of guys sell big farm, right? I know a lot of guys are in pharma, pharmaceutical sales, always doing pretty good. Just pick one that you're going to have a need because you, you 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 dare not want to be in the industry now that you can't sell shit. So that's all I would say in whatever you do. Guys, you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, so just to, just to kind of give the give the brothers another another perspective to look at it, right? So I'm in operations, but um, as I was saying at the beginning of the show, I work for a really big brand, right? So um, a big part of what I do and the way we're trained being production managers is you own every piece of that, of that uh, process. You're, you're almost like a, um, you're almost like a plant manager for whatever lines that you own. So there are times when I do have to speak to the end customer, maybe they have a complaint about something, right? Um, you know, the, the, um, the coding on my bottle. So it's just, a, if it's a, if it's a startup company and they are selling, 
um, Jim's uh, greatest root beer, right? And they get the bottles and they say, hey, you know, my, uh, my Julian date is not uh, showing up on my bottle. The salesman is only going to take it so far before I start getting emails saying, hey, I got this guy who said that his uh, Julian date is not showing up on the bottles or, hey, the, the, the shrink wrap on the packaging is kind of crooked. And then guess who, got, guess who has to talk to him? Um, I get on the phone with him and I literally go through and say, hey, this, 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 is, what our, um, this is what our countermeasures are going to be. This is what the countermeasures look like. Um, attached to this email is a new set of, um, this is something that we just introduced to, in our process to make sure that we are checking that Julian date X amount of times per shift. Um, and, and then I also want to say that even though I'm super technical in the operations piece, um, right. the way that we're trained also, especially to get to this level, um, it's, it's not so much the, the specific industry, it's the thought process that goes into how you do business in this industry. What I'm saying right. is right. if I lost my job today um, and I went looking for a sales job and I ran into um, Dyson Crumpman, the, the, the elevator company, and I'm going to be a salesman for, for the elevator company, I could literally look at the blueprints, read, read, read a lot of the blueprints and um, the history of the company, um, and look, look at look at the accidents uh, versus, you know, how many uh, elevators we have in, in, in service right now. And I could go out, be a salesman, be able to speak to that industry. Um, but I'm still leveraging the really technical side of my brain. So it's not so much being really just locked into one industry. It's the it's the way that you're trained and the way that you approach um, the way that you approach that industry. I was fortunate enough to have some a, a guy who was really, really on everybody's ass about uh, understanding everything about what you own, that little piece of the business that you own. Um, and that also um, allowed me to um, interact with a lot of salesmen, interact with a lot of end customers, interact with, interact with a lot of other departments. Um, so when you guys talk about the IT department, the sales department, whether it's transportation, whether it's out on the floor um, in the actual operations, whether it's senior leadership, uh, or if it's uh, uh, a competitor that we just so happen to have some kind of relationship with, I'm, I'm, act, I'm able to move through all of those different pieces of the business and still take a little bit from all of those pieces of the business so that if I, you know, worst case scenario, if I leave the business, then um, I still have a lot of skill sets that I've picked up along the way, one of them being a salesman. Yeah. Can I, can I add something to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go from you and then we'll go back to uh, Brother Ramil. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the question, what is better for black men? Is this men who are coming out of high school who are just trying to find a career so we can, so we can really have an answer? Yeah, it can, it can be both. Like, and after that, we're going to move into the entrepreneurial piece, right? So okay. just like our own personal experience with how this works. So just, okay. yeah. Yeah, because like literally, you know, the, the experience I had when I was mentoring, you know, the 19-year-old, um, he just got his uh, – I think he got his associates in marketing. And, um, you know, I told him, you know, I put him into a mentorship to be an entrepreneur into the business. So I would say um, it really depends on the, the, the gentleman that's, 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 you know, growing up and being an adult to determine mm -hmm. their, uh, what they're going to be good at. Because mm -hmm. if, and I know we're going to get into the entrepreneur piece, but based on their, um, you know, the lane they want to be in, um, it really would depend on those type of things because a lot of black men can succeed with working with entrepreneurs rather than starting their own business. It okay. Can be so okay. much we can be so much bigger and better. I mean, I I have the blueprint for selling what I do, you know, that can easily be taught to another black man. You know, if anybody wants to reach out to me to, you know, to learn about that, you can hit my email, Mike Global at gmail.com. Pretty much we have a uh, pretty much a uh you know, step-by-step -step guide to how to sell our products, you know? So it's like for us to be a community, you know, if something is selling, I mean, you need to get on with what's selling and, and get, I mean, that's easier, you know what I mean? For instead right. of learning all of the processes, you know, if a guy has a blueprint on how to sell something and it's working, you know, help their brother out. You know, that's just right. my two cents on that. Okay, no, no, that's, fine. that's no problem. Go ahead. Uh, that's his email. Go ahead, Ramil. Uh, let me shout out, shout out, brother Caesar. <laughs> Brother Caesar, shout out to Brother Caesar. He, 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 Caesar be uh, uh, go, going in on the, uh, uh, going hard for ADOS, man. Shout out for the cash at Brother Caesar. What do he do? 
That nigga got all kind of money. Oh, Duke Jackson, get Jason Whitlock on the show. He's probably going to start podcasting now. Coon doesn't come with a retirement plan. Thank you, Brother Ill Wills. Thank you, Brother Riddy uh, online. Uh, oh, he says, uh, something of a tip drive salute. Riddy online to the uh, to top of the lotion for your ankle, Raven uh, O'Shea. Great panel for Brothers Past Press Shows. I learned a lot. Kill the great work. Brother Andre Hatchet, thank you so much, my brother. Um, go, 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 go ahead, Brother uh, Ramil. Yeah, sh- shout out to. Uh, Caesar for sure, and uh, shout out to, yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. and then shout out to Andre Hatchet as well. Um, so are we on the entrepreneur side yet, or yeah, we- let's go to the entrepreneur side, right? Because that's what we specialize in. Um, I, I haven't had a regular job, man, for I don't know since when, man. So I think I think only mediocre is the only one that's still in corporate. Uh, they kicked my ass out in 2014. So we will do that for the rest of our, our 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 show, like how we do our things, you know, online or whatever. So go go ahead. Yeah, well, if that's the case, uh, for the entrepreneur side, there is no you're gonna have to learn both. You're gonna have yeah. to have superior service and superior sales. All right, if you if you if you're good at selling, and people you you reel people in and they get to your service and they see that it's shitty, it's gonna make you look bad. If you are have an incredible service, but you right. don't know how to sell, how are people gonna know about your service? So if you right. if you're gonna go if you're talking about the entrepreneur route now. There's no way unless you're going you can hire somebody to do some some of that stuff, but no, they're not gonna have the passion as you. And I know as an entrepreneur, you do have to delegate some things, but your service and your sales, you need to have a, a deep hand in that, and you need to have a, a very heavy say in what's going on, if not a hundred percent say, because that ser- sales and service <laughs> it's like a lifeline in your business. I mean, you have other things like marketing and inventory uh structuring, things like that, but Sales and mm-hmm. service, like as an entrepreneur, there's no one over the other, in my opinion. Uh, you have mm-hmm. to be good at both, and if you're mm-hmm. not, you're going to you're, the boat's going to sink. Yeah, so, yeah. Let me let me jump in on that, right? Because you know we are in the market um, of, you know, we're in the manosphere community. This is the black manosphere. Although since I've gotten here, and I can remember the earlier days, the content has uh become more vast like we weren't having shows like this to this level but i know so many people right talented videographers guys who can edit guys who are just excellent at what they do and the service their service is off the chain you know it's just like um you ever been to one of those black restaurants soul food restaurants food is just hella good but they can't sell shit right there's always that person it's just like McDonald's. McDonald's burgers are not really that good. They're not as good as Wendy's. They're not as good as Burger King. But McDonald's can fucking sell, can't they? Like, and, and the problem is you have so many. And when you want to become an entrepreneur and you step out into this space on your own, you are really, 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 really good at what you do. But the thing is, you don't know how to market. And nobody knows you. Um, and so then you fail. When you become an entrepreneur, even on YouTube, there are guys that I feel like, man, you know, in the same genre, like my channel should be better than theirs. I should have more subscribers than them. But for whatever reason, that person just outsells me. Uh, they outmarket me, right? They understand how to do things and, and on social media content. That could be a thumbnail. That could be a better title. I mean, even things like that are selling, right? The title was good. The thumbnail's good. Uh, whether you know about it and you click on that video, that video is a, you just been sold, right? If you're a new subscriber to the page and I didn't know who you were and I it's recommended and I click on it, I've been sold based off of a title or, or something like that. And what I figured out on this end outside of corporate America is when you're an entrepreneur, Selling is key because some people have good service, but afraid to put out a price point that's okay. Well, I'm going to do it for cheap. Then here's the psychological thing with that, right? If my price is too cheap, then people won't respect it. And they'll think that I ain't shit and they ain't going to fuck with me. Right. Or if the price is too high, you understand what I'm saying? And all of that comes with, with, with this idea of selling because, you know, maybe because there's there's people, man. I know you in Atlanta, right? Both of you, two guys in Atlanta. There are guys with a tons of clothing companies out there and um, really good clothing, uh, but but can't sell it. 
You know, Andre Hatcher was telling me about this vegan truck that he, that he goes to. And um, vegan truck pulls up, food truck. Um, they, they, they know your name or they know returning member or whatever. And um, food is okay, but they, they know how to keep their customers interested and know how to sell to the customers. You know, customer service. Now, I will say this with black people, right? We might have good shit, but customer service sucks. I know that because sometimes my customer service sucks as a YouTube channel, right? And it's just that the whole idea of selling and then the whole idea of customer service, retaining customers, um, asking for other people to, even on YouTube, what do we say? Subscribe, hit the bell, share your video with your friends. That's asking for more business, right? When we tell people to do that, what we're saying is give me more money. We're not, we're saying, give me more money, right? We want you to help us build the family, Nick, because we want more fucking money for what we do. But even, even in black YouTube and, and, and things like this, we don't really know how to sell. And let's talk about it as black entrepreneurs, especially those of us who deal with um, uniquely only black audiences like me or maybe Ramil. Um, we we have a hard time getting frustrated with our customers, right? And I, I'll say this because I do it all the time. God knows I do it all the time. Um, we really, as entrepreneurs, don't really understand, like, what the needs of a lot of our customers are. We just figure, like, a lot of times, all right, Ramil's in business. His business is doing good. Well, fuck it. I'm going to do the same business he's doing. Or Mike Check Global is doing the business. Well, fuck Mike Check Global. He's doing it. Why well, I can't do it? But Mike Check Global knows his business, though, right? We, we don't understand the ins and outs. We don't understand our demographic. So we jump into the business, and we don't really understand. Because when you jump into the business, you don't own the business. The business fucking owns you. That's just what it is. The business owns you at this point. And um, I've noticed that, you know, when you want to ask for Patreons or when you want to ask for subscribers or you want to ask for all of this, there's a certain level of selling. When do I do it and, and what part of the video? So when you become an entrepreneur, your service is just not good enough. Everything has to sell whatever you're doing. The presentation, if you have a physical product, um, how that product is, is wrapped. And um, and like I said, shout out to Mike, uh, Mike Check Global. He said, "Hey, if you don't, if you struggle with these things, um, then you need to go out and get outside help." And let me just say this: there's people out there. A lot of us don't want to spend the money, but you have brand consultants and people who help you do things like that. And most guys that are doing good, they have stuff like that. People have um, outside people that if you're not good at that, you need to have those things, right? So I just wanted to, 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 to talk about my experience as an entrepreneur. You know, I'm I'm getting better than that. I do cuss niggas out from time to time every day, but I'm working, God is working with me on that. Yeah, I'll be telling niggas, fuck you, nigga, I don't want your money. You ain't shit. And I'll be really mean that too. Y'all niggas know how many of y'all in this chat have ever heard me tell y'all, fuck y'all, get off my chat. I don't want your money. Kiss my ass. Press one if you ever heard me say that. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a lot of ones. Shout out to Beatology. But as entrepreneurs, brothers, let's talk about this for the black, black men out there. We got Brother Beatology, and he's a vendor. He sells, you know, uh, a whole lot of shit. Let me introduce him. Go ahead, Brother Gordon. What's up, you guys? My name is um, Gordon, um, DJ Stealth McGinnis. I have a company called Beatology. Um, sorry I'm late. I was just out buying about $2,000 worth of records. So if you guys uh, need any records, any vinyl records, or vintage um, clothing in LA, let me know. We out here turning it up. We out here riding, and I'm still out here buying stuff. So if y'all, <laughs> if y'all all of a sudden got some vintage stuff or all of a sudden got some vinyl, just let me know. All right, all right. So that's about the beatology. Uh, we did a really, really good show with him and his. Uh, you know, he sells uh, uh, vintage records, used clothes, new clothes, stuff like that. Let me ask you, brothers. Right, as you guys have been. And, and, you know, in this business, all of us are entrepreneurs in our own right. Um, how valuable is the service that you're doing? Um, how valuable is the selling part? How do you pitch to customers? Um, how do you overcome objections for sales? All of those things. So for those guys that want to get into something like we're on a small scale, right? Uh, who wants to start off with that? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I'll go. I'll go. Um so you so say you say okay as far as the sales thing this this is how i like to do it man right i like to focus um because even though i'm good at selling and i'm i'm actually very good at selling i just i really don't like to do it so what i do is 
I set up my marketing and uh, my my uh, prospecting systems to the point where I don't have to really sell. It sells itself. So, for example, uh, in wholesale real estate, they tell you that you need to get a lot of cold calls that people uh you got to call hundred people's phones to find somebody who want to sell you a uh, thousand p- phone calls to get one right. yes. Okay, I don't like to do that. So what I would do is I will spend more money on marketing, more money on online mm-hmm. advertisements. I will spend more money on direct mail things. I would I rather market more than sell more. That's why I'm with it. And don't get me wrong, sales is important. You have to learn how to do it, and I'm good at it. But I just rather have my marketing do the selling for me at this point in my life. And I like to, and I will spend whatever it takes for good marketing campaigns so that I can get hotter leads for less work. Right. right. No, 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 no. Facts, facts, facts. So uh, I, anybody want to go? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to just comment. Um, you know, um, I, I know we were talking about uh, the difference. Um, well, just a little bit. We were talking about the difference between corporate and like doing it yourself. And really, in my mind, it's, it's all exactly the same. It, it's the same basic structure, foundation. Um, when you talk about, you know, being an entrepreneur versus what these corporations do, they we they all do the same thing. I mean, you could think of a corporation as its own entity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And just like, you know, from an entrepreneur, you have to brand your business. Right. A corporation has to brand their business. Um, just like you have to market, figure out the marketing strategy, the sales strategy. Uh, organization needs to do the exact same thing. It's just the, the huge difference with an organization is that you have an employee base, you know, and dependent upon that employee size. So it's just like an entire team. It's like a it's like a microorganism of human beings coming together and try to figure something out. You got all this organizational structure in order to try to make it work. But it's really it's all the same basic things. You know, it's going to be slight nuances depending upon the particular industry or what it is that you're doing. Right. Like if you're in some type of digital sales, right, there's no physical product. Well, if there's no physical product, then you don't have to think about, you know, uh, fixed costs for like buildings and stuff like that. Right. So like you, you think about things a little bit differently depending upon the business or the industry that that you're in. So like I I wanted to relay that message to the brothers because like you know I, I never think of it as kind of either or I just think about like in the grand scheme of it like how does it all make sense how does it how does it all come together um, but from a sales and service perspective whether or not it's an entrepreneur or whether or not it's a corporation if you if you're shitty on either or I mean you could bring them in the door from like a YouTube channel person you could bring them in the door but it, you know when it comes to like answering emails when it comes to you know, setting up, you know, other pipelines for folks to come through like a Patreon or something like that. Right. Like if you if you don't stay on top of all that. And I find like often the personality types that are really good at sales are usually not that good at servicing and then vice versa. Like they're usually if you're really good at one, you're you're OK to not that good in, in the other one. But the ones that are really, really good at it, and you can get away with that in a corporation because you could just take a job in either or. But when you're right. not ignore it, you say have to- that again. Say that again. Say yeah. that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When in a in a in an organization, you can either you could pick the track as as what the wrench was saying earlier. You could pick the track and kind of do well within that track, depending upon right. Like if you're if you're like more of an introvert and you want to like code, for example, that's a servicing type job, right? Um, and usually introverts are not. It doesn't make their cup runneth over to be in sales oriented positions, but like. From an entrepreneur perspective, in order to be a cut above the rest, in order to get, you know, f- beyond that, you know, what they say, like in, in the first five years, 50 percent of businesses fail. Usually right. you have to be masterful at, <laughs> at both sides of the coin in the equation. So that's one of the main differences is, you know, when you do it from an entrepreneur, entrepreneur perspective, it's like you got to put the whole thing on your back. And if you don't know, there's there's resources for free on YouTube to go off and, right. and take a look at it. Like, you know, I say all, all day, like. On my channel, I've learned how to YouTube through YouTube, you know, just YouTube yeah. videos about how to YouTube, you know, so the resources right. are there. Let me right. and shout, out brother, let me say, shout out to Brother Caesar. I'm for harsh the criticism against AWS, but when you criticize us to impress society at large, I can't rock with that. So FJW and sorry, OJ, I had to get that much. Idiot, so that so we're real great show. Thank you, Brother uh, Caesar. Uh, who is going next? I'm sorry, was that Brother Rancher? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I want to, one of the things I want to touch on is. For me, and it may not necessarily be for every brother that works in industry. For me, this is the gym so that when I start my own business, um, how to be masterful at it, just like uh, Brother Mediocre was talking about. 
on another stream, there was another brother was like, well, you know, if, if you know that much about that business, you know, then you can start your own company. No, no shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like no shit. So for, for those of us who work in, in, in industry, uh, regardless of what that industry is, uh, the goal is not always to retire, bro. A lot of us are in the gym, getting it in so that when we get out in here and when we get out into the world and start our businesses, it's going to be hard for a lot of brothers to even fuck with it halfway. You know what I mean? Right. So right. when I talk about when I talk about knowing the complete knowing, I mean, you know, every facet of what you are uh, selling or what you are producing. I've learned a lot of those skills doing what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? So if you have someone like me who have years in the business and I come out and I understand all of the Lean Six Sigma piece, I understand uh, what it means to uh, work between departments. I understand what it means to work with a competitor. I understand what it means um, or how to go about uh, being deemed essential versus someone who hasn't been through that yet. I understand what it means to work with the city in which I'm doing business in. I understand what it means to look at a budget and be able to take apart and compartmentalize what's important, where we need to cut back at. I understand how to cut back on my labor costs. I understand how to source uh, materials from overseas, right? I understand loopholes on how to get around uh, getting certain things from overseas. Um, I've had all of that training um, <laughs> doing what I'm doing now. So if I'm a business owner and I have all of this expertise that I've learned from working in the industry, and it's a brother who uh, may be good at what he, what he does, but he doesn't know this kind of stuff. Granted, I would never hold that information from him. He's a brother with a business. I'm going to try to do everything I can to help him. You know what I mean? But um, it's going to be hard to keep up with somebody who's already cut those teeth and put them right. into practice and know what it's supposed to look like and had a lot of resources to lean on as he's, as he's learning all of this stuff uh, and doing it over and over and over and over again. Um, he's going to be some, some, a few steps ahead when you start talking about when the bottom falls out of the economy, how to shift and... Um, you know, and make sure that you still can eat. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to comment on that as well. Uh, Oshay, I wasn't sure if you wanted to move on, but I wanted to comment no, on, on that. Go ahead. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I also wanted to bring up uh, uh, in that as well, because I think like a lot of brothers are, are, you know, like they're, you know, graduating from high school and they're thinking like, wh which path should I go down? And I don't really have an answer for you, but I can tell from my experience, I could tell you um, um, what I think on that. And I think like, if I was just to go out of high school or just to go out of college and try to start a business on my own, I wouldn't have had the skill set. I wouldn't have had the necessary information in my toolkit to do it well. Uh, and I think like I would have increased the likelihood of failure if I did it directly out because um, it was basic concepts that I just didn't understand from a business perspective. Right. From a customer service sale, you know, it's just basic things that I didn't understand. So I appreciated going through, you know, you call it the tutelage or what have you of like a corporate America experience. So I can sign up. I can kind of see, oh, OK, that's that's how they make this work or that's how they're making the, the innards of a company work. Uh, and then then going off and then getting an MBA on top of that. I think then it was like, OK, now it brought everything full circle. Right. So if I sprinkle in kind of all of this education that I was receiving, both from a, mm -hmm. um, a learning perspective and then also from a real life working uh, perspective, it, right. it has uh, uh, decreased the likelihood of failure when I've gone off on my own path to do it as well. Right. right. So like, there's things that I use right now from a YouTube perspective that I would not have any idea about. Unless exactly. I saw it it in the industry, unless I saw it. Say it again. Yeah, I would have no idea from a, like a market research perspective, from a branding perspective, mm -hmm. um, from customer um, insights, analytics, research. Right. Like there's so many things that I would just and, and honestly, like that's what I see. Even for like we could talk about YouTube if, if we want. What I see the one of the biggest mistakes that uh, brothers are making when they go out on this is that they don't have a business plan. Like just just a real simple. And the thing mm -hmm. is, is, like business plans are often meant to be broken. Right. But like they don't have they don't understand, OK, what's going to be my marketing plan, my acquisition plan? What's my retention plan? How am I going to brand things on the channel? How am I going to make it a, a, a digital experience that every time that someone comes that comes through to my channel, they have an expectation of some type of feeling. Right. Like or 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 whenever it is that I want to um, advertise something, 
they don't make it feel like wrench was talking about earlier the vacuum cleaner salesman like oh no here we go again you know what i'm saying like like what are the things that i'm doing to help them to bring them along for the journey and like these very like base to me they're basic concepts but you know I'm like interfacing with folks that are, are are trying to start up a channel they're like I didn't even think about that. You know what I'm saying? So I, mm -hmm. I, I just say all that to say it's from my experience of doing it in a way less risky environment, because in corporate America, 50 percent of those that start out of undergrad are not being fired from co our corporate America in the first five years. But we already know from being a, a startup business that that rate is true. Can I, mm -hmm. can I interject right there? Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Let me, uh, brother. Uh, let me just go to, to, to brother B. Well, hold, go ahead, and interject real quick, and we go, to brother Bology. Go ahead, go ahead. Just yeah, I, second, would, go ahead. I was just saying, like, uh, the conversation is kind of going towards a, a, a corporate in uh, a corporate or entrepreneurial kind of versus type of conversation. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the um, what what what, what are we trying to really uh, discuss. What where we're trying to really get at which one should be best for 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 black no, men. No, you just making a point. That's all. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, I, I know. I know. My end. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a one versus the other. It's more or less just trying to get a brother's an idea of um, an idea of what you can take from each one or what to expect and 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 whichever whichever route you decide to go. So it's not me, you know, shitting on the sales guys uh, because sales are. The salesmen are essential to sell the stuff on the oh, on the yeah. back end, right? Um, and then I don't I don't think it's the sales guys that are shitting on the operations or the manufacturing side. Um, it's just trying to give brothers an idea of, right. you know, a real world idea of what happens or the skills or the personality that is needed to be in either uh, in on either side. Um, one of the things I'll say real quick is. Um, all, you know, a lot of brothers want to be entrepreneurs, right? A, a lot of brothers want to be business owners, and that's fine. And I'll tell you from the perspective of somebody who hires a lot of a lot of individuals. One of the things that you learn in 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 corporate is how to have difficult conversations with a difficult demographic without getting pissed off, jumping up, slapping them, calling them a honky whitey, whatever. You learn how to have difficult conversations. Um, Without without losing your shit, and a lot of us are too emotional. I mean, look, we are burning shit right now. Um, right. One of the things I talked about in another show is we still trying to get brothers, or I'm still trying to get brothers uh, about pulling their pants up, man. You know what I mean? You walking you walking around with a with a big brand on your shirt, and 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 you still and you still sagging. Now, if you own the company, you can do that. But um, if you have to go and talk to a uh, a company that may actually buy so much of your goods that uh, they change your whole, you're able to change your lifestyle around um, and you get stopped. You can't even get past the front desk because you haven't figured out that you probably should have your pants up on your navel, at least right now. Then how can you really own a business if, 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 if that's where we at? And the reason I say that is because a lot of brothers talk about, yeah, being business owners and stuff. But until you learn how to move in corporate, you're going to always get stopped at the front desk. You know what I mean? So, um, Unless unless brothers hear shows like these that I have somebody really grab them, grab them and take them under their wing and show them, hey, this is how you move in this environment. This is how you uh, present in this environment. This is why it's important to know, you know, the front, back, up, down, left, right of what it is that you're trying to sell. Because if you try to sell me something and I'm familiar with it, I'm going I'm to I'm burn that ass just just because I want to make sure you understand um, everything about what you're trying to sell me. Right, right. Let me let me go ahead and let Brother Biology get involved. Brother Biology, um, how important is the selling and the service part of, of the industry that you're in? And, and how do you how do you do that? How do you overcome objections? Because we haven't really talked about that. How do you um how do you sell to people? Um, how do you figure out the need for your product? All that thank you for the silver tongues. To E Myth is an excellent book for this conversation. Thank you, brother. Go ahead, brother Biology. Well, that's what going to Disney helped me. At Disney, we used to teach other corporations customer service. Hello. Uh, Wait, stop right there. I know that for a fact because I went to the California Disney Grand when I was with another company. And they do that there. for everybody. They're the top of the top of the top of the food chain for that. Yeah. So Disney's number one in customer service, but what they lack is employee um relations. <laughs> and <laughs> but we're talking that's a whole nother 
how, you know, story on how to treat employees, how to find employees and all that. That's just, that's a whole nother conversation. But um, customer service is number one. Sometimes you just got to let your ego go. And it's hard for me because people will come in and they'll lowball you and you see there in Balenciaga. You know, people will come in with $30,000 worth of stuff on and lowball you and argue with you over a dollar record and things like that. And what I realized is that a lot of people got rich from being cheap and um, some got rich by ripping people off. So, I mean, you just got to learn how to deal with everybody and treat everybody as a number, but treat them as a number and special at the same time. Like you just got to let stuff go over your head because it's hard for me because I love music and I love what I do. So I take it personal. I'm not just selling records because it's good money and I'm selling it because this is my life. So what I learned on Facebook, because this is like my sixth Facebook account, it's just like ignore people. As soon as you think you're about to go off with somebody, press block. Because I spend a lot of money on Facebook and Instagram advertisements. So the last thing I need right now is to get kicked off. And I and I have to stop posting in your group because I don't want to risk somebody reporting me and I, and I lose my business. I mean, because most of my business <laughs> through my 5,000 people on Facebook. So I can't afford to lose a, 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 a sixth Facebook account. Hey, real quick, brother. So, so if I'm learn on, how to ignore. If if I got a uh, Facebook advertising, I'm more acting a fool on Facebook. If I if they delete, put me in Facebook jail, that stops my advertisements as well. Yes, it, it stops everything. Like you could be on your personal Ooh. account. Ooh. I have I have two. I have a backup personal account, but I have six, seven groups and about ten different pages for all my different businesses. You mess up on that personal account, that's your ass. Uh, and well, they, let me stop. they give you. A, <laughs> I'm serious. No, they'll at least they get they, they step it up. Um, I think it goes from 24 hours um, to three days to seven weeks to 30. Then it goes to getting kicked off. And then I think after a year, it goes away. Guys, don't lose your account. It's like my six account. You know what I mean? And you don't want to go through all that. Thanks Trust for telling me. me. Thanks for telling me. Because the Facebook page, my Ramilla Mill Facebook page, I be going ham. But I got advertisers running on the business section. So I, and Let I really it go, can't. man. Let it go because it's hard, man, because something you could do on your personal page will mess up your business. And they do it like that. They right. they don't want you to do businesses unless you perform under their rules. You know, Facebook um, is a selling application now. And so is Instagram. So a lot of stuff is about to start changing. They're going out to eBay and Amazon. So if you guys don't already have a shop hooked up to Instagram and your Facebook business page, you slipping if you have product to sell. And it's cheap advertisement, really cheap. It's cheap. That's why I need that shit. Yeah. yeah. So don't let it boil over to to, to your to your um, business account, guys. You know what I mean? And, and just learn how to ignore and then have a template. Like I have a template of answers for people now. You know what I mean? Ten different template answers and just go through your template answers because it's just, it's not worth it. Hey, uh, hey bro, are you familiar with Final um, Frontier? I'm sorry? You familiar with Vinyl Frontier? Um, no, is that um, um, some guys out here in California? Yeah, but he, he does mostly on the internet. He does records too. Like He helps producers find samples. He has a little Patreon. He collects records. I just thought you might have... Uh, no, but I'm going to look them up. Thanks for that lead. Like one thing about this sector on YouTube, it's not a lot of people doing it. Um, so I'm thinking about like bringing the vinyl into YouTube because vintage clothes and stuff is blowing up on YouTube. And shouts out to all my friends that lost their shops this week. I was thinking about spending my life savings and go on Melrose. You guys know it costs $10,000 a month to go on Melrose for a shop and you have to have $50,000 key in. Um, that means you have to have $50,000 in your bank account. You know, and I was about to put $20,000 worth of inventory in there. That could have been my shop, y'all, burning up in L.A., just to let y'all give y'all some perspective. It ain't just white people and foreigners on Melrose. There are black businesses on Melrose. There are black businesses on um, in Santa Monica, too. So while y'all out there stealing all that shit, a lot of us businesses can't afford high-ass insurance to cover everything. And a lot of this vintage stuff is very hard to do inventory on, so a lot of us don't have inventory lists, so it'll be hard to even make a claim. So when y'all out here stealing shit and all that shit, just keep in mind there are black businesses um, and minority businesses out here, too. Yeah. So thank God I didn't do it, and I don't even know if I want to open up a store now. 
Bro, just you take know? it online, man. Like Vinyl Frontier, he he what he does is he has a whole YouTube channel. He has a couple YouTube channels. He posts like cuts from the records online and in the description box. He has everybody, you know, how you can contact him and reach him. He sell he he'll say the record either personally or you can, you know, he also gives out like monthly like uh uh like mp3s and, and stuff like that it, i think it will, it will grow your business a lot of people online looking for that vinyl classic records you can't find anywhere else you know you can't even find on, on youtube and spotify so yeah uh, and, and the market's not flooded yet like i said doing what we're doing it's, it's flooded and doing vintage clothes is flooded but um yeah I'm, I'm gonna take that to heart but but yeah. but going back to customer service another thing we got to think about is how to treat other vendors man and how to treat other businesses like okay i'm a vendor and i do pop-ups but i go to other swap meets so i know what okay. it is on both sides so we got to start treating our co uh, our competitors like friends, man, because a lot of the stuff they can't sell. You know what I mean? Like I went and got like Led Zeppelins and stuff like this um, for like five bucks. This is easy, twenty, thirty dollars online. You got, you guys know about profit margin. I mean, <laughs> that's that's good. You know, especially when um, you're you're selling a couple thousand a week. You know what I mean? And and it doesn't take up a lot of room, just like clothing. You know what I mean? So we gotta have better relationships because these are other guys doing the same thing I'm doing, but they sell it just where they can make money and I can make money. So be cool with everybody. One thing I'm trying to do is learn Spanish. You know what I mean? Because everybody that I go get this from, they're all um, Hispanic. You know what I mean? So we have to have better relationships with, with, with our competitors because you never know. Um, even either even the other record pop ups because we all have our specialties. I specialize with other producers. Like I have a lot of samples and stuff. My boy he does mainly rock. My other boy does Latino. So we just trade records around, and it's enough money for all of us. Believe you me, guys. Whoever has the best stuff for the best price in supply and demand times is going to win. And customer service will put you over the top. I mean, Disneyland is nice as hell when you go there when they charge you $100, but because they do it with a smile, you feel better about yourself. That's one of the main things they say, smile when you're on stage. Because when somebody's smiling at you, they, they can run a whole bunch of BS on you. That's why when people don't speak English, all they do is smile. Because <laughs> that's what people train to do when all else is bad. It's just smile and tell them and be real. You know what I mean? And um we, we, we just have to start being honest with our customers, too. You know, you guys want to have repeat business, um, be up front and do what you say and say what you mean. You know, and and, and when brothers come in the booth, man, y'all re respect everything. Just because we another black business, that don't mean our service is any less than or or, mm -hmm. or 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 our products any less than. You know what I mean? And sometimes we do got to charge a little more because. People look out for each other. Them Asians will give other Asians better prices wholesale. Every right, race right. look out for each other but us. It ain't one black, well, one African guy that I use. You know what I mean? And then it really ain't no brothers that that, that are doing this. And we need to get into it, guys. I'm telling you. Like, it is people making two, three thousand dollars a day doing this vintage stuff. And it just find something you like and just find mm -hmm. it vintage or antique. Every 30 years, stuff recycle, no matter mm -hmm. what it is. Maybe you like um, audio, go amps right now are hot, cassette players, all that stuff, mm -hmm. video games, books, whatever you like, believe it, it's a market in it and learn that market and make some money. Appreciate you guys' time. Okay, okay, no, great game, great game. Anybody wanna jump in on that? Brother Mike Check, go ahead, Brother Mike Check. Yeah, um, pretty much everything he was saying was you know accurate and um, I was, all I was gonna say was um, you know, pretty much uh, we as a people, man, we just got to do a lot better, you know, with supporting each other and each other's businesses like, um, you know, in the industry that I'm in with uh, marketing to businesses and artists and helping them grow. Um, you know, one thing I, I run across a lot is other people doing the same things. And instead of really working with the company and building that company up and, you know, because most entrepreneurs are solo entrepreneurs, you know, what I'm saying they just got their own their own thing going on. But to really build that that corporation, you know, we got to really come together. And I've been not really having issues with it, but just, you know, I'm just seeing that we could be so much bigger if we just had people in position. And it's like I have a, just a question to the to the chat and to the men on here. You know, what 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 qualities would you look for into a black man that you would want to work for? You know what I'm saying? Because we all trying to do you know our best and 
want to have these big corporations, but the culture of black men in, in the rank and file thing really needs to be uh, hashed out. I don't know if that'll be for this live or for another live, but just what culture mm -hmm. are we going to have when right. we all are working for a black man that's our CEO? Let's say if O'Shea was <laughs> our CEO, you know what I'm saying? And no, niggas be fired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I was just fucking with you. Go ahead, bro. Right. You know what I'm we saying? Could, we could do that. We could do that. We could do that tomorrow. We could do that another topic. That's a good topic, though. Cool. Appreciate it. All right. Any, any anybody anybody else want to uh, or unless you have something else you want to add with the mic check? Anybody want to say something? No, that was it, bro. Yeah, so I will say um as we kind of wrap it up, uh brother Beatology hit on something and I don't know if anybody caught it. He hit on something that I that um that I talked about, um, I say maybe 20 minutes ago is interacting with the competition, and he hit it. He hit it right on the head, man. Just because they're your competition, it's not competition in the sense of what we think about a lot of time. You know, uh, just because somebody's competition doesn't mean that uh, we get a green light to treat them less than cordial or professional. You know what I mean? In, in, in the hood, competition is something different, or in our culture, competition is something different. In business, I'm literally sitting up here as we speak, looking at an email. You there? All right. Sure you you wanna well, why, why, you wanna talk about why you talking, Romeo? Well, no, I I mean I I <laughs> I halfway agree with the competition. I mean I you do gotta treat them cordial and uh, I'm savage. I'm I'm sorry. I'm savage. Yeah, yes, I, I, yeah. Like I, I halfway. <laughs> we in I'm Atlanta, not saying bro. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> I ain't gonna be nice to them. But, I mean I ain't gonna be mean to them, but I ain't gonna be you know. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you're competing for the same dollar. And there should be some cordial, cordial um, I don't know if it's a word, cordiality, whatever the fuck, uh, between competition. But it's far, but I'm not going to get too cool with them because, I mean, it's still like we are still competing uh, for the same dollars. Now, if he was, he's an indirect competitor, you know, like, you know, not in the same industry, but but still competing for the same category of OK, that's another story. But if you're my direct competitor, um. I'm not going to say uh, that I'm going to be mean to you, but I'm I'm definitely not. Uh, we're not going to be having like conversations like that, you know, but that's 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 I mean, I mean it depends on the industry, I guess. But uh, mm -hmm. me personally, that, that's that's what I'm at with it. Just do what I do. Go on their Instagram and steal all their customers. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I mean, being real. That's what we all do. You go on their Instagram page and, and you just follow all their customers. You know what I mean? I'm not going to DM. Now, what they do to me, they go and DM all my customers. Like, exactly, I'm not going to do that. They you work for you. But, but I will follow the customers. So you just study them, you know, and at least you can get their customers, I guess. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me let me talk about this in terms of, um like, one of the, one of the biggest, I think, industries that a lot all of us brothers right like we all have something that we personally doing outside of this but what's kind of uniting us is this whole um social media content space uh especially in the underserved market like you know african-american men topics i think this is like one of the two or three business streams i know the um shout out to the other brothers of black brain trust i talk more about stuff like um i think their topic is a little bit more geopolitical but they do have streams of, on, on tech but um the social media content space allows you to do a lot of uh, cross collaboration. Um, and that's something I don't want to talk about, like, like mediocre tutorials and reviews. I didn't even know that he, um, I didn't even know that he was an NBA grad based off the content. He never talks about it, but once we were able to position this particular topic, um, I was able to find out like, damn, that's your rich Turner was like some other content, but he wasn't able to, per, to participate in that. He really didn't have an interest in that for the Andre hatchet. But you know, when you created this lane. All right. Now you have something that you can cross collaborate with the brothers. And this is a booming industry, social media content creation for black men, social media content. I mean, obviously we, we, we saw what happened with COVID-19 um, that if you have, the, the the strategy if you have maybe the output with adobe premiere you know a rendering machine stuff like that you know we're trying to bring a lot of our brothers into this business right and uh, one of the things that social media content will allow you to do that maybe physical businesses won't it will allow you to like beology can stream what he does every day 
upload it and then come and talk about it and might be allowed to do a podcast on it with somebody else in the same similar field. So that's what social media and the internet game has transitions to where my competitor in the real life can now be my friend on social media and then both of us can get money, right? Um, that's how the manosphere has grown into our content spaces. I would uh, assume it's a two or three or four million dollar market every year now from what it was in 2015. Simply because there's so much money involved in what we do now, nobody can get it all. You would be, I mean, nobody can get it all, right? So we want to tell brothers that if you can't collaborate with people, maybe in, in real life, in, in your same similar niches, I dare you to come online and start um, your podcast. You know, I've heard that some guy, shout out to brother SPK. There are people, man, that have um, niche podcasts like what you guys do. Like, you know, your NBA media, Mike Tech Global, you work in the entertainment industry with, with artists, stuff like that. Rince Turner is manufacturing. There are people that get $5,000 a podcast just to create this content. Um, so the, it, so these industries in which we can come together and we can work and create content, we're leaving, I don't know how many billions of dollars a year out on the table because a lot of you brothers already have this experience and we just can't get it to people who need it. Now, this is a serviceable industry. I will tell you one thing, black male content, or Ramil America tell you, we are underserved market. Yep. We need more creators. Matter of fact, I'll probably let Ramil talk more about that. Uh, go ahead, brother. How, how underserved are we here in black male content spaces? We are very underserved. And I mean, we're so underserved. Like when I first got on this, O'Shea kept telling me like, yo, bad news right now. Bad news. I'm like, why is this nigga telling me to uh, come in on to some shit he got going on? And then I see like, yo, like it's literally not. I'm saying telling other brothers, I put on Ty City. I put on other brothers to come up because this content for that's black male center, I didn't even realize how undisturbed it is. But if you look on cable television, the radio station, there is nothing, period, catered towards the African American black male. It's the market. I don't even know why people are missing out on this 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 segment right here. Um, but you no, know, O'Shea is is one hundred percent correct. The black male market does need more talented creators. Need more talented. Anything that we have to cater towards black men, because for some reason people don't want to serve. Well, I know why people don't want to serve uh, niggas. Uh oh, uh oh. What's the uh, what's that reason? What's that reason, brother? I mean, it's a few reasons. Uh, first of all, niggas are hard to deal with. Uh, right. Niggas, are, they're cheap as fuck. Uh, right. They are. Uh, they they want they want everything, but want to pay little to nothing. I mean, right. there's a lot of little nuances with dealing with niggas as far as uh, right. sustainable business. And then on top of that, you might have to crack one of their heads because they might try you. Right. So it's just, it's just so many reasons. But either way, if you got the grit, uh, don't be scared to come in and, and give uh, black men the, the, the content and service that they deserve uh, because they will return a favor to you, but you just can't yes. be on BS. Right. Right. And let me just add to that, right? That's another thing that we want to talk about. Shout out to Brother Leo Anthony. And uh, Coach Ali's corner, we we got to start servicing our own people, right? I was talking about service industries in general. Uh, we got it. We have a six hundred billion dollars spending power that we don't even. It could be run. We don't even. We, we we we. It's unorganized, right? It's not even administrated at all because we have nothing set up to um, even keep that money in the black mill economy. So uh, I, I dare all of you brothers out there that are listening to sounding sound of my voice. Let's start trying to service each other as a group, right? If we can do that, um, if we could, you know, like I said, we talked about the 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 the, the meetup that we we're going to do this year, but we can't do it this year possibly. Uh, we have a lot of talented guys, a lot of talented black men that have a lot to offer, and uh, there's a lot of money that we leave on the table by not working together online. And uh, we can do a lot, a lot of great things, and we can bring a lot of brothers to here. Shout out to Maurice November right now, who's doing so much work and branding work now for a lot of brothers. Sub Zero, myself, he's done it for uh, Black Heights. Um, so just connecting brother, brothers, right, is a is an industry in itself that we don't even talk about. Just connecting people is powerful, right? So we want brothers to get involved in what we're trying to do. Don't just sit there and listen. Get actively involved. Um, a lot of these guys might even live in your city. You can do some nice, great things. Anybody want to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to add, you know, all, you know, all, all of the extra things that I have done on my channel is all I found them from, you know, brothers that have reached out. Right. Like, you know, logos and stuff. 
I got a right. brother who does that, you know, uh, extra uh, uh, editing of like live streams. I got another brother that does that. So I kind of it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, so much of us are so used to the old script of just consuming the entertainment and don't really have an understanding of where the entertainment com com is coming from and who is really getting mm -hmm. their pockets padded, you know, but when it's homegrown, you know, it's something different, right? So, you know, when we talk about, you know, and Oshie, I say you do it, you, you say it on occasion too, that like, you know, I'll take y'all money, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it feeds the, it feeds the entire oh, yeah. system and it gives back, uh, it gives to us to, to right. support the knowledge and keep on bringing it forward. So that's why, you know, you could do the whole of games. We could do like all these different, um, they have all these different panels and forums to try to, you know, educate towards the truth. You right. See what I'm saying? Anybody want to jump in on it? Or? Anybody there? Yo. Yeah, yeah, man. I was just yeah, but I ain't, I was good on that. But he he hit the nail on the head with that one. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I know we're gonna do Ramil. If you got time, man, we're gonna try to go ahead. I know what Ramil wants to do. Ramil wants to talk about these niggas and these riots. Oh um, shit, man. Yeah, they cut my stream <laughs> off earlier. Them whole ass niggas. Oh my, my bad. This is a hard game. Let me stop. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh so um, so Ramil, you wanna you wanna go over and do the do, do that to right now? Oh, you finna start it up now, bro? If you got time, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's about to bro, I want to get in because I because like I said I was going to run the panel early, but somebody flagged me. I won the decision, so I got back right. up. So uh, okay, uh, yeah, bro. I'll release my anger on hey, yours. If y'all need me to go live from you said, what you say? No, nah, I said I release my anger on your I said, screen. If you need me to go live. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, we we about to go. So what we about to do is we about to go strictly over to my O'Shea vlogcast channel. I already got twenty people over there waiting. It starts in ten minutes, but um, it's riding the answer in Black America to uh, uh, to get justice. So uh, we'll go straight from here over there. And this is what I want to also say. Right, we do have um some good brothers supposed to come over this week. Uh, Brother Darius, you gave me a really good topic. Brother Gabe is going to be out for this week. Uh, but we do have um, Brother Craig Harper at Tipsy Tulips um, that was wanting to uh, get, get back, back involved. Brother Antoine Wade from Georgia Tech NBA will be back. So we have a lot of different guys, and I, I find myself that I might have to um, uh, run like even maybe one of these every day because the, there's so many different guys. And, and, and guys are tired of seeing the same exact guys every show. So now, like, you know, we have, like, two new faces. Well, basically, Mike Chick is the first person who's been here new. Beology's been here before, but on the one-on-one. -on -one. So, um, you know, Brother Big Moose, who's a guy in the tech industry. So we're going to be moving a lot of different guys and alternating got some guys on different shows just because we got so many brothers that want to participate now. And I want to tell you guys, right, um, this niche of black male professional content is going to be the next big thing. Uh, whether guys don't want to agree with it right now, uh, I don't worry about the numbers. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the next big thing. So if you're a brother, we need more guys to do stuff like this. We need more guys to be consistent with it. We need more guys to develop networks. Uh, the more guys we have on this, the more people we can meet, the more things we can do, the more attention we can bring awareness to situations. And, and as far as the police brutality goes, um, the more conversations we're having like this, um, and then the more uh, we can work together, starting small, you know, we can solve a lot of these problems that we're having in America ourselves. So it, it starts with us as a group, uh, a group of black men that are starting to, you know, starting uh, giving mentorship, people finding value in these conversations. Uh, brothers like Rich Turner always kill it on here. Brother Ramil is just coming and joining in. Brother Gabe A, Brother Maurice Hassani Ali. So many uh, and all in this podcast, for the most part, we have, I think, like at least three guys are under 35. Right. Which was mediocre, Mike Check and Ramil. So you got a lot of young guys. So it's not like, oh, you guys can't re relate. Now you got young niggas on here too, right? That's doing their thing. So, um, you know, we got brothers from from all of the sectors that can come in and talk about these particular fields and businesses. So, guys, join me on the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. I'll let everybody go ahead and um, uh, uh, close 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 out, and we'll be we'll be uh, ready to go on the next channel. Yeah, I was going to say. Um... Anybody uh, who wants to connect on Instagram, man, I just put my Instagram in the uh, in the chat, and for the fellas on the uh, on the panel, um, I, I I connect more on Instagram. Uh, I just sent a message to Ramil and uh, Beatology on Instagram, so make sure you all uh, hit me back on there. What's and, the What's the uh, Instagram? Got uh, you, bro. Just Mike Check Global. 
and uh, anybody else, you can just put them in the chat. I'll uh, connect with you guys on there. All right, all right. Yeah, you 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 sent me a, a message. I think I the other day. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gee, you gotta use it. I, I don't never be using Instagram, man. I, I'm gonna start though. I'm gonna start though. Instagram, that's uh, worldwide. It, it, yeah, I gotta I gotta start, man. I, I I've been on there triggering on too many holes. But uh, I mean, I was uh, my wife is in here. I mean, I thought about triggering on holes, but I didn't. What up, big bro? Gab talk. Um, anybody else? Yeah, check me out if you guys um, have the time. My Instagram is Beatology, um, B-E-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y, and I follow back. If you guys have any questions, like, like I said, about anything, mention O'Shea, and I give you one of them free 15-minute 15 15 consultations that I charge 500 an hour for. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys go to O'Shea's Patreon, and if you can't um, do the 50, do the 5, do something, man. Let's keep this content alive because this is how we go to the next level. Us black men actually doing think tanks like this and actually ha having um, discussion like this because I learn every time I turn into O'Shea's show. So make sure you guys support O'Shea, and um, make sure you get him on the $50 one because um, right up here on Fig, you can go um, have a nice time for 50 but we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> So that's um, <laughs> I know so that that's right. beatology, beatology right. on Instagram. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys' time. Have a good day. Stay safe. And um, if you guys need me to go live from the riots, let me know. I will. You know, oh, we man. can go. Yeah, you be over there people. with the prostitutes and the riots, nigga. Now we. Yeah, I know about the world. You get locked up, nigga. You be up at Snoopy Fox, son. Be be out of Yeah, yeah. Be out crazy, man. He's like, yeah, man. I can go to Figaro right now, family. If you need me to go, like, nah, bro. Let's talk about the topic today, brother. We, we. All right. Who else? Who else want to go? Who else want to uh, 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 say something? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna hop in there real quick. So, so first of all, I just want to say you know, <clears throat> peace and salute to the panel. You know, you guys did wonderful. But Shay, keep on doing these, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, you know, just like brother Beatology was talking about. Like it's, it's grassroots like this right like forming it down at the bottom this is you know at, 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 at now that we're at the inception of kind of where black entertainment is going right like to be at the beginning of it creating discussions like the, I, like this i think is really really powerful so uh, uh everybody that's down into the chat feel free to check me out mediocre tutorials and reviews it's long but you know you can spell <laughs> so feel free to check me up over there the channel has experienced uh explosive growth over the past month and a half two months or something like that so feel free to join me over there we like to have the live streams and pre-recorded dope videos as well so see y'all over there all right all right thank you again brother thank you for dropping the now i know you blowing up man so i appreciate you having time to come over uh brother brother ranch or brother ramil uh well yeah, yeah uh, can you, uh, go ahead bro uh, all right go ahead, bro. Bro. You guys, you guys already know who it is. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, uh, Logical Black Male Empowerment. That's what we talk about. We're Miller Mayor channel, so I'll put that link in the description. And I'm about to, y'all about to see me again anyway. But I uh, right. appreciate you for having me, O'Shea, as always. And uh, you know, it is what it is. Appreciate y'all and shout out to y'all as well. Mike, check. I see you. I just checked your Instagram out, man. I can already tell you about that business. The 90-10 rule: 90% marketing. 10% actual music. That's what that you know, I said instrumental. Right. So you're right. I learned that from somebody. So I you I can already see you on point. Um okay, bro. Yeah, yeah so that too, man. Yeah, y'all y'all both in the same. Yeah, I, I, I got him on Instagram, man. So I, I just uh yeah, appreciate uh appreciate you having me on Shay and uh yeah. All right, go ahead, brother Wrench. Yes, sir, man. As as always, uh super um super super um you know thankful to be able to get on the show and speak to a lot of the brothers, man. And uh, as always, uh, if it's one thing that I want the brothers to be able to take from these kind of streams is to see that brothers have different perspectives and uh, we don't uh, disrespect each other, curse each other out, start calling each other names. We just respect brothers' point of view, um, you know, and, and maybe they have, maybe there's a nugget in there that you can take from it. Um, but super, super uh, proud of this platform man, and, and what it's what it's turning into. Um, Glad to be a part of it, uh, like uh, like Brother Mediocre Tutorials was talking about. Glad to be a part of it uh, as it kind of takes off and looking forward to see um, where it ends up in the next 5, 10, 15, whatever the case may be. So appreciate all you brothers on the panel and all the information that y'all bring uh, and all the brothers in the chat, sisters in the chat as well. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll keep at it, man. And any way I can contribute and help out, brother, you know, I'm for it. Man, you be contributing all the time. You be dropping some of that. Yesterday, man, when you was talking about making a plan once you – because we had a show yesterday called um, How to Recover Once You Fall Off, right? And uh, so 
uh brother wrench man he just took the show and uh he carried it on his back him and brother ali so you know we uh i i, I get up uh my time to make sure that i if the power's on i'm gonna be here so i try to run this show daily if i can do it it's kind of hard coming up with a new topic but um you know the brothers have been been uh uh checking in so we we, we deal with everything and hopefully we can have a great show brother patrick dix uh he he's really been been uh great um antoine antoine wade gabe the, the brothers that are on here today a lot of black men are coming in participating in this forum right and um it's going to turn into some brother sub zero shout out to him um i want to say something about sales right sister erica williams erica williams who is um all over black america right you know erica williams doesn't even take Google AdSense. Erica Williams is so cold with her products and services, she turned her AdSense off. And Erica Williams sells to the tune of like $300,000 a year or something like this, just on YouTube. That's how good Erica Williams is. Glenda Cameron is another person who does the same thing. They don't even come on here looking for AdSense, none of that. They just, whoop! <laughs> and they kill them every month. Glenda Cameron don't even get it. I don't think he even gets an AdSense check. I don't even think I think he turns it off. So you have people on here on YouTube that just use the platform and just sell all day. Thousand dollars a day. They thinking like, look, if I get five thousand views, I can get like, you know, a percent to buy. That's 50 people they're going for. They're not even trying to get a video monetized. Right. So you have people who do shit. And Erica, as I might get more views in her, Erica make a lot more money than I do. Right. So 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 just think about just. A selling platform on social media where you just hear you don't even care about making no assets, no super chats, you don't give a fuck about none of that shit. <laughs> no Patreon, nothing. Your your product is so good, you sell them through that, and they have like their own sales funnels. Same thing with brother Sub Zero. Sub Zero does the same thing his tech school, murders in it right now. He makes way more money than I do, and he don't even have the subscribers, right? Because he just sells everything. Um, let me let me do this, guys. Go to the new show. Everybody see it right here, right? We're gonna start right now. Leave here. Me and Brother Ramil are going to go ahead. I think we got Nyla, Taz. We got some of the UBM teachers email me. We're going to have a niggathon over there tonight. I was supposed to do the show last night. We will be back with Brother Darius's uh, topic. Uh, he will uh, be back tomorrow. Uh, to make him be back tomorrow. If I got to do your topic, then you got to show up. Uh, so we'll be over there. Thank you guys for joining on Patreon. We have some brothers joining us on Patreon. Thank you so much. I, I, I do know that Brother Roberts wants me to Put them thirst backs up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring them thirst box back. I gotta do it. So um guys, thank you so much. Thank you, brothers, for encouraging a lot of brothers out there. I mean, a lot of brothers um didn't even know that we had stuff like this going. This kind of talented uh, African uh, American entrepreneurs out there. We're getting better every single day. Guys, come over to the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. If you're not subscribed to that, go to my second channel, O'Shea Vlogcast. Subscribe, hit the bell, and you are gonna see a nice uh, live stream. Um, you might not see it again in a few hours after that because we're really gonna be cutting up. Any last words? Appreciate you, man. I, I I'll take it easy, man. But thanks a lot, man. Just send me a link when you're ready, bro. Okay, okay. I'm, I, well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go in like I'm gonna send a link. Actually, about ninety seconds. So <laughs> peace right. out. Thank you, brother. See you guys tomorrow. Um, and thanks to everybody supporting the show. Peace. All right, y'all be cool, bro. All right. Peace.